What's up, fellas? Y'all made a liar out of me. Well, in two ways. <laughs> Y'all made a liar out of me. Um, I said, of course, on my video I uploaded on Saturday, I said that Saturday's video was going to be my last uploaded video for at least a week, if not a week and a half, because on Wednesday morning, I'm going to be traveling to Los Angeles to work with two one-on-one face-to-face uh, coaching session clients. That's where I have most of my clients of any city in the United States is Los Angeles. I have more clients in Los Angeles. Yeah, I've traveled to Los Angeles more than any other city in the United States, for sure. Well, really in the world, period, not just the United States. But yeah, that's where I have my highest number and highest percentage of clients. So that just shows you a lot of guys... Uh, in Los Angeles need the assistance of a dating coach. Now, speaking of that, and I get this question all the time, so it shouldn't surprise me, but somebody came in my comment section, either my last video or next to last video, and said, simple question, why does any man need a dating coach? And I've answered this question three dozen times, the analogies I always give is, why does any man or woman need a, a health and fitness personal trainer? Why does any man or woman need an auto mechanic? Why does any man or woman need a personal therapist or a personal chef or nutritionist? Why? Why does a tennis, professional tennis player need a coach? Why does a professional golfer like Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods has a coach. Why does he need a coach? He knows how to play golf, don't he? Why do you need a coach? Why do high-level basketball players like Kevin Durant and Steph Curry, why do they have individual skills coaches that work with them on their dribbling skills and rebounding skills and defensive skills? Why do they need coaches and trainers? Why? Answer that question. Why? Here's a simple, without me getting into a long, detailed answer, Simple reason is this, man. As human beings, and this applies to both men and women, who's the number one person you're the least objective in terms of evaluating their behavior? Who's the number one person you're the least objective? It's you. Ha! <laughs> it's you. It's a fact. There's exceptions, and I, I, I actually consider myself one of the exceptions. I think I'm pretty objective when it comes to evaluating my own behavior. But generally speaking... Most men and women do not evaluate their own behavior objectively. They just don't. Most people do not evaluate their, the strengths and weaknesses of their own behavior objectively. Like there's a lot of men and women in society who really think that they don't have any flaws or weaknesses. They genuinely believe that. There's some people, including a lot of people on YouTube I listen to, who seem to have, who, who almost present themselves as having that attitude. And some people, they don't think anything's wrong with them. They don't think they have any flaws, any undesirable qualities. And that's why you need somebody like a dating coach 
or if not a dating coach, like a, a personal mentor. Among other things, what mentors and coaches do is they, they challenge you to self-examine yourself. That's one of the things I do that's different from probably 95% of the other pickup artists and dating coaches out there. I don't just give people advice. I don't just give men advice designed to help them get laid. One of the things I do, matter of fact, I give somebody by the name George Bruno. If you're familiar with George Bruno, he did an interview with me at last year's 21 convention. And I'll include the link to our interview in the comment section. But, um, George Bruno, he, that's one of the compliments he gave me. He, he he actually did a video, which I appreciate. He did a video where he called Mo One the best dating advice book he's ever read. And I really appreciated that. Yeah. He called he called Mo One the best dating advice book he's ever read. But one of the compliments that George Bruno gave me is he said, one of the things I like about your coaching style, Alan, is you provoke men to engage in self-examination. You provoke men to engage in self-examination. A lot of dating coaches and pickup artists don't do that. See, you got a lot of men out here, particularly in the manosphere, that they're quick to point the finger at the flaws and weaknesses of women's behavior. They want to call out all the aspects of women's behavior that they think is representative of bullshit behavior. But they don't spend hardly any time looking at their own behavior and asking themselves, what aspects of my behavior are full of shit? What aspects of my behavior are manipulative? What aspects of my behavior are dishonest and disingenuous and misleading and manipulative? What aspects of my behavior are being detrimental to my own dating and relationship objectives? A lot of, a lot of people don't challenge people in that regard. I do. I challenge my male clients when I work with them. I don't even want them thinking about the flaws and weaknesses of women's behavior. I want them concentrating on the strengths and weaknesses of their own behavior. That's all I care about, is men concentrating on the strengths and weaknesses of their own behavior. So, among other reasons, that's one of the reasons why people need a dating coach like me, man. Because I'm going to give you an objective analysis and evaluation of your behavior, of the strengths and weaknesses of your behavior. Matter of fact, as a lot of my clients know, my Skype and telephone consultation clients, my email consultation clients, and even a couple of my one-on-one -on -one face to face coaching clients know, if I do a consultation session with a client or a coaching session with a client, and they spend too much time talking about what they dislike about women and what they irrit what irritates them about women, man, I get pissed off. At minimum, I get mildly irritated. At maximum, I get super duper pissed off. I hate when women, when men spend over 50% of a consultation session or a coaching session talking about what they don't like about women. I don't give a fuck about what you don't like about women. I don't. As a dating coach, I don't give a fuck what you don't like about women. They ain't got shit to do with shit. They ain't got shit to do with shit. All I care about is, are you maximizing your strengths to the highest degree? Are you working on changing, improving upon, or weeding out your weaknesses? That's what I care about. Are you enhancing and maximizing your strengths? And are you identifying, changing, and or improving upon, or weeding out your weaknesses? I care about everything to do with you, the man. I don't give a fuck about shit to do with the women. I don't want you telling me, spend 20 minutes telling me that your ex-wife or ex-girlfriend was a bitch. I don't give a fuck. I really don't. I don't care. Because the simple fact of the matter is you allowed her to be a bitch. If she was a bitch for more than one day, guess what? You allowed her to be a bitch. You allowed her to be a bitch. Somebody calling me. You allowed her to be a bitch. If you, if you criticize a woman for being spoiled or disrespectful, guess what? If you allow that to happen for more than a few hours or more than a day, that's your fault. That ain't the woman's fault. That's your fault because you allowed that shit. See, that's what a lot of men don't want to own up to. Any undesirable behavior that women exhibit towards you for more than 
a few minutes, for more than a few hours, and definitely for more than 24 to 48 hours, that's on you, bro. That's on you. That ain't on the woman. That's on you because you allowing that shit. You allowing that shit. Why are you? The, my question, like Bruno pointed out, I like to ask men questions. And my simple question would be, why are you allowing that shit? Why are you allowing women to get away with spoiled behavior, disrespectful behavior, and just undesirable behavior in general? Why do you allow them to get away with it? I know the real, at least one of the answers to that question is because you want to fuck them real bad. See, a lot of men, when they want to date a woman real bad or fuck a woman real bad, they'll allow her to get away with a lot of bullshit behavior. I don't allow women to get away with disrespectful behavior. I don't allow women to get away with prolonged episodes of spoiled behavior. I don't allow that shit, man. And most women who've dealt with me, they'll tell you that. I don't allow women to get away with spoiled behavior over a long period of time or disrespectful behavior over a long period of time. I don't allow that shit, man. I put an end to that shit. But anyway, um, oh, now I had, a, I had a couple guys write me, I think one publicly and one privately. I told you guys before that there's a lot of guys who have told me that they follow both me and alpha male strategies. They don't follow just one or the other. They follow both of us. And some of these guys actually, you know, I made some remarks about alpha male strategies in my last video talking about how he's borrowed a lot of my... I did a Scott consultation with a guy who said that Alpha Male Strategies have borrowed a lot of my material from my book, The Possibility of Sex, in addition to borrowing some material from a couple of my other books, Mo One and The Beta Male Revolution. And I had at least two guys that wrote defending him. They said, Alan, I don't think you should harshly criticize Alpha Male Strategies because he actually promotes two of your books. And I've heard that before. I've heard that before. So this is not my first time hearing that. I've heard, and I, I've actually, if you remember, I did a video last year. It was in early March. I actually did a video giving Alpha Male Strategies kudos for endorsing at least two of my books. Yeah, but these two guys, that's what they said. They said, Alpha Male Strategies, he actually gives you credit for at least two of your books. They said he always gives you credit for the possibility of sex, and he always gives you credit for the Beta Male Revolution. He said those two books have actually inspired him and caused him to, to change and improve his behavior in many ways. So I don't think you should go in on Alpha Male Strategies, at least in regard to those two books, because he always gives you full respect and credit for the possibility of sex and the uh, Beta Male Revolution. They said, now, yeah, he has criticized Mo One many times, so I can see you going in on him about Mo One because he's criticized that book. They said, who said again? They said, he never really mentions that book at all. They said, I've never heard Alpha Male Strategies mention your book, who said again. So I don't think he's had anything good or bad to say about it. I've just never really heard him mention your book, who said again. But but anyway, they said, they said yeah, man, he, he gives you props on your book, The Possibility of Sex and The Beta Male Revolution. Which again, I already, number one, I already knew that. And I did a, at least one video where I gave him a shout out for doing that. So I did give him his, his kudos. Yeah, it was early March of last year. I remember because I was I was in San Francisco. And I remember I did a video where I, because, uh, yeah, he did like a whole video on the Beta My Revolution. Last year, he did a whole video promoting and endorsing my book, The Beta Male Revolution. And to a lesser extent, he was promoting a possibility of sex. I've heard him give kudos to the possibility of sex, too. So uh, in regards to those two books, yeah, I give him his props. He, he has actually given me my kudos and respect in regards to those two books. But he be trashing the shit out of more one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, as I always say, I ain't got nothing personal against that brother. He doing his thing. Um, here's what I want to come back with a video, even though I said I wasn't going to come back with another video before I went to Los Angeles. But... Um, you know, I always kind of lightheartedly brag on my videos that there was one podcast host I used to beef with that he's issued a number of apologies to his listeners and viewers. And I remember one time, if nothing else, just out of spite to him, I said, man, I've never had to come on a video podcast and issue an apology or a retraction of something I said. I said, I stand by everything I said. So I rarely, if ever, will issue an apology 
or a retraction of something I said. But today I am going to offer at least a lighthearted semi-apology. A lighthearted semi-apology for something I said in a recent video. Now, as you know, I did a lot of videos related to the whole de ongoing debate about which approach is more effective with women, a direct approach, which is what, of course, I endorse with my mole one approach, a direct approach or an indirect approach. Basically, you have three, I would say all men fall into three categories. There's some men who exclusively endorse the direct approach. There's some men who exclusively endorse the indirect approach. And then there's at least a small percentage of men, they almost endorse a hybrid of both. They almost approach, endorse a hybrid of both. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong with this, but from what I understand, I think that's what Mr. Lucario does. Mr. Lucario, he primarily endorses a direct approach, but he's, uh, he's always said there is a place in certain situations for an indirect approach. So I want to say he almost uh, promotes a hybrid of both. And there's a couple other dating coaches who almost promote to one degree or another, promote both equally. Um, they feel like different situations calls for direct and other situations call for indirect. But anyway, one of the things I, I made a statement about, I was talking about the benefits of direct, some of the weaknesses and the benefits of indirect and the weaknesses. Now, of course, I had much more benefits for direct than I did for indirect. I had much more weaknesses and detriments to indirect than I did for direct. But here was one of the benefits I promoted for indirect that turns out, and I should have known from my own experience, it's not at least 100% true. It might be partially true. But if you remember, one of the things I said is that, I said if there's one main benefit that indirect has over direct, is that it tends to significantly diminish the severity or the harshness of your rejections. I basically said, when you're direct, you're far more likely to experience really quick, straightforward, abrupt, and harsh and negative toned type rejections. Whereas I basically said, when you're indirect, you're going to experience a lot of more polite rejections, more polite rejections, rejections that are more not as bruising and not as insulting to your ego or to your feelings. Well, based on some feedback I got in the last 24, 48 hours, if not a little bit longer than that, turns out that's not true. Turns out that's not true. And again, this is something I actually should have known from my own experience because one story I've told along these lines of my own experience, I remember year, this was years ago, but I, I never forget, I've told this story a few times. I remember one time I was walking down the street and uh, all I said was to this woman was, hey, how, how you doing there, beautiful? How's your day going so far? And she said, fuck off, jerk. <laughs> That's exactly what she said. She said, fuck off, jerk, and kept on walking. Did I say, did I use any profanity with her? No. Did I use any X-rated language with her? No. I said what most people call a, a well-mannered, polite opening comment. I said, hello there, beautiful. How's your day going so far? And her response was, fuck off, jerk. So that just shows you, man. See, a lot of guys think the only time you're going to get negative reactions is when you say something that, that either involves profanity or when you say something that involves sexually provocative or sexually explicit language, but that's not true. And again, just in the last roughly 48 hours or more, I received a few emails from guys saying, in respect to two videos, in respect to the video where I said that, and then in my last video, there was a portion that the guy Darius MGTOW, that I didn't really highlight this comment, but he made a comment that a lot of guys paid attention to. He said, what did he say? Oh, he said, I can't remember his exact words, so I'm going to be paraphrasing his words. But basically he said, you could have two guys who could approach a woman and say the exact same thing. Let's call that XYZ, XYZ. 
He said, and again, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially he said, you can have two guys approach the same woman and they both say X, Y, Z, and one guy will get a favorable reaction from a woman, but another guy who that woman is doesn't find physically attractive or sexually appealing, she's going to respond to that guy as if he's a creep, as if he's a creep. She's going to have a very negative reaction to what that guy said. And that's what these guys who wrote me were basically talking about. They were like, Alan, they were making the point that physical, similar to what Darius Migtow said in his comments, they tried to make the point that, Alan, even though you have emphasized that looks, women do emphasize looks, you don't put enough emphasis on that, man. It's all about looks, man. I'm telling you, it's all about looks. It's all about looks. It's all about looks. Darius Migtow was right, man. And when he said it's all about looks, man, if you got the crisp, lean jawline, the six, uh, what do you call it? six pack abs, muscular chest, muscular arms, handsome face, you're going to pull all the women, man. It's all about looks, man. It's all about looks. I disagree with that. Here's what I've always said and what I will continue to say. If I had to put it in percentage. Well, I said this really in the very last video. The amount of emphasis that women put on looks ranges from woman to woman. You can't group all women the same. So again, in percentage terms, you might have some women that I would say that 90% of why they decide to go to bed with a man is because of his physical attractiveness and physical appearance and overall sex appeal. Some women, that might be 75% of their motivation. Some women, that might be 60% of their total motivation. Some women, that might be 45% of their total motivation. And so on and so on. It ranges from woman to woman. You can't say that with all women that looks is 90 to 100% of their emphasis. That, that, that's simply not true. That is simply not true. That's not true with all women. With a number of women or a percentage of women, yeah, that's true. Here's how you can tell. I'm going to tell you the simple way you can tell. Remember you heard me a couple videos joking about what my brother and Ron Wills calls mode zero? Mode zero. Yeah, my brother, he was the first one to use that term. And then a few years later, I heard Ron Wills here on YouTube use that term. Mode zero is a lighthearted term for when a woman just looks at you and she decides it just based on your physical, the way you look and the way you carry yourself that she just wants to give you some pussy. She'll just hand you some pussy on a silver platter just based on a combination of your degree of physical attractiveness and just your overall you know, sex appeal in terms of your demeanor and disposition. And I basically say some men, they got it like that to the point where they don't even have to use any verbal game to get women in bed. They don't even have to initiate a conversation, period. Women, like somebody, I had one of my followers bring up one of my stories in line. This guy wrote me, he said, Alan, didn't you have a story I heard you talk about on Blog Talk Radio where you said you were working in a shopping mall in Los Angeles and a woman just basically came up to you and offered you some pussy? Yeah, I did. I, I remember specifically, it was in 1995. I was working for a cellular phone company in Beverly Hills. And we had this kiosk, what's known as a kiosk. You know, you ever been in a shopping mall, you see these things that are in the middle of the mall. They're like a cart, like a like a like basically a, a medium size or large cart where people sell products from that cart. That's known as a kiosk. And my cellular phone company, had a kiosk in what's called Westside Pavilion, very popular shopping mall near UCLA in Los Angeles, Westside Pavilion. And I'll never forget, man, one time I was working at my kiosk and these three attractive sisters walked up to me. And one of the three sisters, she just looked me dead in my eyes. And she was more, she, you could say she was more on me. She said, I'm just going to be honest. I have no interest in purchasing a cell phone from you. And I said, wow, that's disappointing. She said, honestly, I just think you're very handsome. I think you're very sexy. You look good in that navy blue suit, out on this navy blue dress suit. And she said, I would just like to kidnap you for maybe a weekend and allow you to have your way with me in bed. And I was just like, well, damn. 
And I looked at her two girlfriends and they gave me this look like, that's how she rolls. She don't pull no punches. She don't miss no words. That's how she rolls. And uh, yeah, sure enough, we did. We ended up fucking. But yeah, she was mold. So that would be an example where I had a mold zero situation. I didn't, I didn't spit no verbal game at this woman, man. She just came up to me. And I had that happen a few times. One other time I'm thinking of on top of my head was one time I was at a, at a party in Indianapolis with some of my frat brothers. There was a woman I was at this party in Indianapolis and I was going to go to the bathroom and this woman grabbed my arm and I thought she was going to ask me to dance. And she basically told me, she said, what's your name? I said, my name is Alan. She said, <laughs> she juiced up my head big time. She said, you one of the finest brothers I've ever seen in my life. She said, I would very much love for you to come home with me when you leave this club, if, if you desire to. She said, I would very much love for you to come home with me. And she was an attractive woman. Yeah, we ended up fucking. I went to a crib. That was another mode zero moment I had. Um, and I told you, I had a lot of them my senior in high school. If there was one particular year where I had a lot of mode zero instances is my senior in high school. I had a lot of times where women just pretty much introduced themselves and let me know right off the bat that they wanted to give me some pussy. But anyway, the point of those instances was not for me to rub my ball. I know if Tony Mason will listen, he's going to be like, look at Alan Roger Curry rubbing his balls in men's faces. No, my point was going to be with mode zero situations, again, mode zero means the woman makes the first move and she pretty much lets you know Right off the bat, she wants to give you some pussy just strictly based on the combination of your looks and your sex appeal. That's when you know that 90 to 100% of the reason why a woman wants to sleep with you is simply because of your, your looks and sex appeal. Is when a woman approaches you, she initiates a conversation with you, and she tells you pretty much within the first two to three minutes of the conversation that she wants you to fuck her. That's the number one way you can tell that a woman puts a high emphasis on your physical looks and your 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 disposition and demeanor and your overall sex appeal. Yeah, man, not all women put the same degree of emphasis. Oh, but even the bigger point than that was, other than them making a point about looks, again, which I disagree with, I don't think all women put the same exact emphasis on looks. It ranges from, number one, it ranges from woman to woman. And number two, it ranges from type of relationship to type of relationship. I get, I've already pointed this out. If I divide relationships in at least three, oh, speaking of different types of relationships, read my article in the uh, Negro Manosphere. I wrote a new article that came out today about alternative relationships and relationships of convenience, relationships of convenience. But, um... Like, for example, I know for a fact, women put a different amount of emphasis on looks and sex appeal when it comes to short-term non-monogamous casual sex versus long-term relationships and marriage versus platonic friendships. And when it comes to those three types of relationships, women put different emphasis. For example, when it comes to platonic friendships with men, women don't really care about looks and sex appeal at all. <laughs> So that's one type of relationship where I say women don't care about looks and relate and, and sex appeal at all. Is if they if they if they're just seeking to maintain a purely platonic friendship with you, the main thing they care about when it comes to platonic friendships is how entertaining you are, personality wise, how flattering and entertaining you are, how accommodating you are, how emotionally empathetic you are, and how financially generous you are. That's the main things women care about when it comes to platonic friendships is how flattering and entertaining your personality is, how accommodating you are, how emotionally empathetic you are to their problems, disappointments, and frustrations, and how financially generous you are. That's the main characteristics that women care about in a platonic friendship. Long-term relationship. Long-term relationship, women also care about how financially self-sufficient and or how financially generous you are, how good you are with kids, 
how much you're willing to spend time with them non-sexually. Um, just are you generally a responsible human being? A mature, responsible human being? And in some, m m most cases, are you going to be faithfully monogamous to them? Are you going to be faithfully monogamous to them? Casual sex is probably the number one type of relationship where women put the most emphasis on looks and sex appeal. When it comes to casual sex, yeah, that's that's where women always put the most emphasis on a man's looks and sex appeal is when it comes to like a one night stand, a weekend fling, or some other variation of short term non monogamous casual sex. That's yeah, that's when women are gonna put a premium on your looks and your your sex appeal and all the things that contribute to your sex appeal. Confidence, your masculinity, your level of erotic dominance and alphaness, your verbal gay, verbal communication skills, your persuasive charm and seductive influence and that type of thing. Um, but anyway, the bigger issue that, these, that, that I wanted, why well, I decided to do this video before I go to LA on Wednesday morning is, uh, yeah, I feel like I kind of misled, man, because like I said, I told indirect guys that when you're indirect, you're far less likely to experience harsh rejections, harsh, real negative type rejections when you're indirect compared to when you're direct. But these guys who were right me were basically arguing with that. It was like, Alan, they said, if a woman's not physically, doesn't find you physically attractive or sexually appealing, even if you indirect, even if you approach her using like really polite PG, PG-13 type language, you, they still don't have a real negative reaction. Like these guys were telling me, they, they've had instances where they approach women in a real nice, polite, indirect manner. And they had women treat them like they were like some kind of psychotic creep who escaped from a mental ward. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I've had a lot of guys uh, tell me stories of that, where they approached a woman even in an indirect manner, where they were really, you know, exhibited behavior of a classy, well-mannered gentleman, and they still got blown out the water within the first 30 to 60 seconds of the conversation. So, yeah, that's what a lot of guys were writing me and saying that basically, they was basically like, if a woman, that main simple argument was, Alan, if a woman doesn't find you physically attractive or sexually appealing, it really doesn't matter if you're direct or indirect. That's what they, these guys basically were saying. They said it doesn't matter if you're direct or indirect. They said you still, not only number one, you're still going to get rejected, which is what my, that guy Dan Sanchez said. Remember that guy, my follower Dan Sanchez said, he basically said the same thing. They said, number one, you're going to get rejected regardless and number two, it was like, not only are you going to get rejected, but more often than not, you're still going to get rejected harshly. Not just rejected, but you're going to be rejected harshly if a woman doesn't find you physically attractive or sexually appealing. They, they're not only going to reject you, but they're going to reject you harshly. And again, I told you I have at least one experience I had like that. Um, yeah, I was just walking down the street. And I remember I said to this woman, it was a Caucasian woman. She was a beautiful, blonde, Caucasian woman. And I said, hello there, beautiful. How's your day going thus far? And she looked me dead by. She said, fuck off, creep, and kept on walking. And I was like, now she didn't say creep. She called me a jerk. She said, fuck off, jerk. And then she just kept on walking. And I was like, damn. <laughs> I just kind of stood there for a few seconds like, damn. Um... She probably went somewhere and reported me for street harassment. <laughs> Remember that episode I did on Blog Talk Radio about street harassment with some chick named Allison? But anyway, I'm not going to make this too much longer than it already is. But um, yeah, man. So anyway, the, the final conclusion is I got to scratch off that as a benefit for being indirect. Again, about three or four videos, I had argued that at least one of the benefits of being indirect compared to being direct is that you won't be rejected in a rude manner, a harshly negative manner, 
in an insulting manner. I basically said the vast majority of the time, if you're indirect, women are going to reject you in a more polite manner. But again, these guys who wrote me in the last 48 to 72 hours or more, they basically wrote and said, no, that's not true. They were basically like, even when you indirect or even when you're polite, you're going to experience a lot of harsh rejections if women do not find you physically attractive or sexually appealing. And basically these guys, even though they call themselves argue with me, they're really making my point. <laughs> they're really making my point. In essence, if you really read through the lines, what these guys are really saying is there's really no point of being indirect. They're basically, they're, in so many words, they're basically saying, if you're going to be rejected anyway, if you're going to ultimately be rejected anyway, and particularly you're going to be rejected in a harsh, negative manner anyway, you might as well be direct. <laughs> that's basically, they didn't say that specifically, but that's what essentially they're saying. They're essentially saying you might as well be direct if, if you're going to be rejected anyway, and particularly if you're going to be rejected in a really quick, straightforward, abrupt, rude and harsh manner, you might as well be direct. Matter of fact, on the side note, that's why a lot of guys, remember I jokingly talked about how some guys actually, believe it or not, prefer to be mole four with women instead of mole one? I know some guys, not too many, but I've had a, at least a handful of guys say, Alan, even though I respect your mole one approach, I actually like the mole four approach. They, they consider the mole four approach a, what do you call it? A preemptive maneuver a preemptive maneuver. In other words, a lot of guys who favor more four, their attitude is, if I'm approaching women, a woman, and there's a greater than 50% chance that she might give me some real negative reaction to me approaching her, then I'm going to give her a negative reaction first. I'm going to say something like, yo, you no good bitch, you slutty bitch. The only reason I'm talking to you is because I want to fuck you, you no good slutty bitch. That's a mole four approach. If you were to approach one of me and say something like, hey, you, yeah, you, you no good, promiscuous slut that no man would ever marry in his life. Hey, why don't you come over here so I can talk about putting my dick in your mouth and your ass because you know you want me to, you no good, slutty bitch. <laughs> I, I'm hardcore, but I'm not even that hardcore. That's not mole one. That's mole four. That would be a mole four approach. But that's why some guys favor mole four. Because they say they want to preemptively strike back at the women who are going to be real negative. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Um, now, this time I really mean it. I said on Saturday, you weren't going to hear from me for about a week. Now I really mean it. Yeah, the earliest you'll hear from me after today is probably next Tuesday. Yeah, I'll probably say a week from tomorrow. I'll probably be the earliest you'll hear from me after today. Because I'm... Wednesday morning, I, I go to Los Angeles to work with two one-on-one face-to-face -on -face coaching session clients. So yeah, next time, the earliest you'll see me is a week from tomorrow, next Tuesday. Until then... Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my Oh, you're the fucking king. You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. the king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are. The vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. 
Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. The king. The king. The king. <laughs> 